Hey there, I am Stephanie and today I would like to share with you how to make money as an artist. I myself have been independent for the last 10 years, so I have a lot of experience to share with you. But before we start, I would like to point out two things to keep in mind whatever you decide to do. The first thing you really want to do is to diversify your source of income. So don't focus on just one way of making money because that is sure to not work out. You really want to have different ways of earning money, so when one month one way is not working as well, you still have the other one that is going to make it all work as a whole. So that is really important, diversify. The second thing that is really important and that you absolutely need to keep in mind is that everything demands work, tenacity and time investment. There's not one way that just works without you doing anything about it. If you want to sell on um, Society6 for instance, which has been immensely successful for certain artists. It's not sufficient to just put your art on there and, and just wait. You need to be regular about it. You need to post on a regular basis. You need to have social media promote your Society6 or Redbubble shop. So everything needs a lot of work and in any case you do absolutely need to use social media and to market whatever you are selling. And there's also a very thin line between overdoing and over marketing yourself and doing it just right. So so it's a lot to learn and there are tons of tutorials out there and you kind of need to go through all of that. You need to learn about it. There's no easy way. So you really need to inform yourself about each way and what the best practices are. Hard work, time investment and you can do it. And another thing that is also crucial, it's more of a long-term thing. In my 10 years of work, there have been times where I have made a lot of money. At that time I was at the peak of what I wanted to do and so I had a really good reputation. I used to make miniature food for about eight years. So in eight years I built up a very good reputation in the miniature food world and in the miniature world as a whole. I even wrote a book and since I had such a good reputation I sold my book very easily. I still have it and I sell it occasionally. But when I brought it out in 2013 it was a huge hit and that was a massive income of money. When you are working independently, you will have times where you earn a lot of money and then later on times where you earn very little money. Either because you decide to change, like I did, I decided to stop miniature food and to focus on my art career, or simply because times are hard. Sometimes geopolitics will put everyone attention and, and nobody is buying anything anymore and so suddenly you had a comfortable income and then you, you hardly have something. So what is really important on top of hard work, informing yourself and being very passionate about what you do is to put money aside when you you can. So when you earn a lot of money, don't go crazy and buy a lot of stuff and crap that you don't need. Really focus on putting money aside for harder times to come because the harder times will come. It's always happening. That's true for everyone. It's not specific to artists. Through life you have moments that can be dramatic, that can be really hard and you will need to have some comfortable cushion, some money cushion. So that is really something to keep in mind as well. The most obvious way to earn money as an artist is to sell your art. Now especially if you are starting out, the first thing you need to do is to build up a name and a reputation as an artist. This is easily done through social media, although if you have studied art in an art school you might have already good contacts with galleries and other artists. You might have some advance compared to someone who's starting out from nothing. If you have contacts, use them, keep them, be very careful about the relationships you have in your art world because that is the hardest to get. I did not go to art school so I never had those art contacts and I still am trying to get more art contacts and it is a very slow process. That does mean it's impossible to be done but it's harder than if you just have them in the first place. Now what about trends? 
Personally, I don't follow trends simply because I see my artwork as my own vision of the world and I personally think that art is much more meaningful if it speaks about contemporary society and if it also is the vision of the artist. So I have a very personal approach to my artwork. I do not want really to be influenced by trends and I tend to avoid them. I might sometimes do things that are considered to be trendy like maybe using an animal in my artwork that is currently hyped for some reason, like foxes or owls or something like that, but I'm not specifically searching for trends. I also would not encourage to look out for trends because then all art kind of looks the same, which I find extremely boring. On a financial point, however, it makes sense to look at trends because if you are following certain trends, then you are more likely to sell your art. It really is going to depend if you see your art as something you want to make business of, which is fine, I'm not criticizing, but you need to be honest about it, or if you really want your art to have some kind of an impact. That doesn't mean you don't want to sell your art, but you want your art to be more meaningful. It's a bit difficult to have meaningful art following trends. So where to sell your art? You could sell your art on your website or on most social media platforms by now. I would highly encourage you to have your own website and even a blog. I know blogs seem like the old age kind of thing, but blogging updates your website all the time, which helps with SEO, so you can be found more easily on search engines. Selling on your website if you're just starting out is going to be extremely difficult, so I would advise to also try to sell on bigger markets marketplaces. One of the most known is Etsy. I have never tried to sell art on Etsy, so I would not really know if it works well. I used to sell jewelry, but I will get to that in my next point. But Etsy is a good place to start. Again, it does mean that just because you put your art on Etsy, it's going to sell overnight. You still need to market it. There are really plenty of marketplaces out there. I must admit, since I have been working for 10 years now, I have a solid reputation. I have a solid social media following. I don't really need those kinds of marketplaces, but for a beginner, for someone who is just starting out, who is not super well known, I would really encourage you to try one or two of these out and to invest some time in marketing them. It's usually also much more cheaper to use those than to use your own website because you have to install a whole website and shop and usually you have to pay a fee for that. And when selling on online marketplaces, of course the competition is high, but the customers are high as well. If you follow the rules of that specific marketplace, if you follow the algorithm and how to use keywords and how to use titles and description, how to make your pictures so your work is shown in its best light, then you can have a good chance by being just found by potential customers. When you have your own website, you have no clients, you have no customers to start from, so it's a lot harder to find them. And this is why I would encourage you, especially at the beginning, to try out marketplaces and to promote those places on top of everything else. Another advice is to not get paralyzed by your lack of knowledge. You will lack knowledge all your life. You will also learn by simply doing. So if you really are intent on selling your artwork, if you already have like maybe 10 artworks that you're really proud of that you would like to sell, just try it out. Now, often selling your own art is really difficult simply because artwork tends to be expensive because you need a lot of time to make just one painting or one sculpture, so you cannot sell it for 20 bucks. You can for certain things. If you are like really into art toys, you might make casts of the figurines and then sell them at a lower price point, probably not 20, let's say 50, and this is more affordable. But most artists are going to do artwork that is at least in the hundreds and often in the thousands, which is perfectly fine. I'm not saying you should lower your prices. Your artwork needs to be priced correctly. However, that also means that it is a lot more difficult to sell because most people cannot afford it. So the easy way to make a living as an artist while still doing something that you generally love is to make products. So there are many different products. 
As someone who has worked with polymer clay for the last 10 years, the first eight years of my career has basically been sustained by making miniature food jewelry. So jewelry is a great way to earn living because people tend to buy not just one piece of jewelry, but they tend to come back and create a whole collection. And usually you can sell jewelry for a very low price point. And so people tend to buy it on a whim. Jewelry is one of those things that are really easy to sell, even though the competition is fierce. As long as you are making something that is uniquely you, I think you have a good chance of making it work. At least that's what I did. So in my case, I would sculpt all the jewelry. So my jewelry was completely handmade. And some jewelry designers have an idea, they have a design, and then they go find a factory that would make the design into reality, and then they buy a stock, and then they sell the stock. Now, this is good if you already have a name, otherwise it's quite a lot of investment time-wise and also money-wise in something that you're not completely sure that it's going to work or sell. This is also why handmade or the handmade movement is still doing quite good. It's because usually the investment is super low. As I was doing miniature food jewelry, all you need to make miniature food jewelry or polymer clay jewelry is to buy some polymer clay, which is not so expensive. And the very few basic tools and some jewelry findings and you're good to go. So your money investment is maybe 50, 50 bucks, something like that. Almost nothing. The time investment is always, always more, but you get used to that as an artist that you have to work a lot to get results. So as a sculptor with polymer clay, jewelry is really a good way to earn money. As a painter, or even if you're making sculpture, you can always transform your artwork into art prints. Now, if you do not want to invest any money at all in art prints. You can always use Society6 or Redbubble or other print-on-demand shops. The plus side is that you don't really have to do anything else than provide good quality digital files, put them on the website, and then, well, sales are raining in. It's still a lot of work in the sense that you have to promote the shop, you have to let everyone know the shop exists, and you still need to make good quality artwork when people want to buy it. When you're trying to sell products to make a sustainable living, you can also think from the medium you are using. So if you are, maybe, maybe you are a ceramic artist, and so you could do pottery, for instance, to kind of sustain your art practice. If you're an illustrator, you could create a certain fabric and make bags or fashion out of it. So it really is going to depend on what medium you use, but the idea to sell products is that they are usually a lot cheaper and people know how to use them. Whereas when you are selling artwork, you are selling a part of yourself and you're selling something that has an intrinsic value but not a useful value. Don't get me wrong, selling products is still pretty hard and it's a lot of time investment. I, I'm, I really want to stress that out in this video because sometimes people think, oh, I just need a good idea and it's going to work. If I have a beautiful shop, then it's all going to be okay. If I can have the best pictures, then I'm going to sell everything like hot buns. It's never like that. It's always a lot of work, a lot of marketing, of trying, and also reevalue your work all the time. Is it good enough? Could you improve it? Can you make it better? Is it coherent with the rest of what you do? I think that's all I have to say about products. If you have any questions about products, just ask. Now, another very popular way to earn money is to simply teach. It is likely as an artist that you have developed and learned certain skills, and you can teach those. People are very demanding on those creative skills. If you know how to draw, how to paint, how to sculpt, maybe even something like embroidery or knitting or any kind of medium you are using on a regular basis and that you really know in and out, you can teach that. People love to learn new skills and love to learn new creative things. You can teach directly on your website. 
there are streaming services that you can use to make videos and stream them directly on your website or more easily you can write and make a PDF that people could buy and then download and if you are and if you have the courage to do it like I did in 2013 you can write your own book just bear in mind if you're in Europe and I'm not going to go too much into detail with taxes etc because it really depends on everyone and everybody is living in a different space but if you intend to sell PDF files, there's the law VAT MOS that you really need to learn about and you really need to be careful about that. Because when you are selling in Europe, you basically have to pay taxes in the country where you are selling in. It's a law basically about digital files. For instance, I live in France. If I'm making a PDF tutorial to download, if someone in Finland buys my PDF, to download, I will have to pay VIT in Finland. So I will have to install something on my website so that the correct VIT is calculated. So I have the exact amount of Finland and then I can send it to Finland. It's really a mess and it's, <laughs> it's actually the main reason why I never really went into selling PDF tutorials because I just cannot be bothered with that. And of course, teaching for me is just a side job, so I didn't really want to get too much into that. Another way to teach is also to use online platforms. So it's a bit like an online marketplace, but specifically for teachers. I use Skillshare, as you might know, but there's also Udemy. I'm sure there are many more. I only know about Skillshare and Udemy. I mean, I'm, I'm getting back to it all the time, but it's it is really so important that you are willing to put the effort and time that is needed to push whatever venue you want to make money from. It is not something that you just, oh, I make a class and then I'm going to get rich. No, you have to offer consistency. Whatever you do, it is really for the long run. So you are making consistently videos, you are making consistently art or products, and this is how you can make money on the long run. It's taking time, it's not always fun. Sometimes it's downright depressing because you, you work so hard and you earn so little money that you wonder why you are doing this. And in those moments, you really have to ask yourself, what would you do if you had all the money in the world? Would you still do art? If the answer is yes, then just keep going. And you can also teach on YouTube, although YouTube I put in a slightly different type of earning money, which I'm going to get back to in just a few minutes. Another obvious way to make money as an artist is to work on commissions with clients on custom work. So this is a good way to earn money. It's usually very consistent because you can ask the money upfront. It's usually to ask at least 50% upfront from a client and even to clearly state that if you are starting to work on the project, you are going to keep about 10%, 20, it can go up to 50%, even if they end up changing their mind on it and they don't want it anymore. So that's something that is fair to do and that you should do. When working on custom work, you really want to be sure that you are asking money upfront because it is not rare that people come to you with an idea and you start working on it and then they end up going somewhere else or saying they don't like what you did. They just change their mind. So you really need to be careful about that because that can be a lot of time wasted on something you are never going to be able to sell to anyone else. On the bright side, usually commissions are good money. There are always people who want something from you that is a little bit specific, something that you used to make but are not doing anymore. So if you need money, usually it's a good way to earn some. It also really depends on what you are doing. I, for instance, did a couple of tutorial videos for Best Fiends. What happened is they found my work on YouTube and they liked it. At that point I was doing more tutorials based videos. And so they asked me if I wanted to do some how-tos of their characters and asked how much. And so I offered a price, they agreed. I was really happy to work with them and they were really happy to work with me. So at the end of the contract I said, well, it was really fun. If you want other videos, I'm, I would be happy to work with 
with you again. Thus, I made, I think, in total about 20 videos for them and obviously I got paid. This is typically the kind of freelance work that might be a little bit aside your normal artwork, but at some point it's good to bring money in. Next point is crowdfunding. You have Patreon, but you also have Kickstarters and all the others that are kind of like Kickstarters, but more local or more specific. Depending on what you want, it can work really great. Kickstarter, for instance, is a great way if you have a project in mind with something very specific and need a very specific amount of money to raise the money so you can be able to make that project come alive. It can be an art exhibition or it can be a very complex installation for which you don't have the money. It can even be a product that you want to bring out. Maybe you want to bring out a book or a tutorial book and you really don't have enough money to to invest in a book, you have the time but you don't have the money. It can be a, a card game, stationery, posters, it can be really anything. That's a good way for you to avoid investing money in something you're not completely sure that is going to happen or work out. And it's also a good way to see if your idea is going to work. If you want to make a specific tutorial book and you're just not completely sure it's going to work out and you don't want to spend a few thousand and never sell it later, you could start a Kickstarter. And then you could raise, uh, let's say, half of what you need to produce the book or even the totality, it doesn't matter. But if you realize nobody is actually helping you out, then it's a good indicator that nobody would buy your book later either. It's really a good indicator on how good your idea is, on how viable your project is, and also on simply being able to bring your projects and ideas to life. Patreon, on the other hand, is a sort of subscription-based platform. People pledge to pay you a certain amount every month and you give something back in return. It really works best when you are able to form a sense of community through some kind of a cool membership. I personally also have a Patreon, but I have to admit it really needs a makeover. And while I'm here, let's talk about the last way to make money, which is also the most delicate. It is through ads and advertisements. The most known way to earn a living through ads is YouTube and blogging. Both require a lot of consistency, so it's not something that you can really count on to like work right the first year. For YouTube to be a sustainable source of income, you have to count at least three years, something like that, although that is accurate for most businesses, so just forget I said that. <laughs> if your blog is well read, you can put ads on it. However, the issue, and this is also why I've never put ads on my blog, even though it's fairly well read, I have a lot of people coming to my website is because ads really just look very cheap. It kind of destroys the quality that you want to put out there. It's like, okay, I'm I'm making artwork that is really interesting or even jewelry. I'm making handmade stuff that is high quality and, and then I'm putting ads on my website because, you know, it brings money. And so this is kind of like for me it's a bit of a problem. It's something that I'm really not comfortable with and that I don't really like to see on other artists' websites either or handmade websites. You never see ads on artists' websites, so it's not just because it looks cheap, it's just it, it's almost a faux pas. And then there are so-called sponsorships. Okay, you are going to throw tomatoes at me because I'm, I'm, I keep talking about social media, but honestly, without social media and without some kind of following, it's going to be really hard to do anything. So when once you have a good social following, you can also get sponsorship deals because you are an influencer. It really depends what type of of sponsorships you are going to accept. If you are painting, for instance, and then you contact a painting company to tell them, okay, I really love your products, I'm using them all the time, can you can we find a deal? I would love to represent your brand. That's fine. That's like, that's how you're supposed to do it. That's good. That's okay. I mean, artists need to find a way of living. They need to find a way of earning money. If you love your brand of paints, then by all means, 
go to them and try to find a deal. Maybe they will say yes, maybe they will send you free supplies. Maybe this can be something. But you don't want to become an advertisement company and then start advertising all kinds of crap. I often get contacted by brands that want to market their things and most of the time it has nothing to do with art. It's like some beauty products that I, I I hardly use beauty products in my own life. I use water and olive oil. So what am I going to do with beauty products that I would not know what to do with it? And to be honest, I don't really want you to buy those beauty products because I think that you don't need them. So this is always something that you want to keep in mind because it's not because you, ha you are famous on social media that you can do anything. You should really be careful about that because if you are accepting all kinds of deals because it's money, you might actually lose your potential customers. Because what you want to do, and you should never forget that, is make a living from your artwork. And all those things are all nice and okay, but they are kind of side jobs. So yes, sure, you have to put some energy into it, but it's still more of a side job. You want to do art, not sell some crap to your audience. Do I look like I'm sick of influencers selling you some crap? Yeah, I really am. <laughs> okay. okay, these are all the ways I've used to earn money that I still use to make money right now as well. They're not perfect, I'm sure there are plenty more and I invite you to leave a comment if you have like a brilliant idea I forgot to talk about and just open a discussion. Things to keep in mind is that you are probably not going to earn enough money from just one of these ways and I would advise to try at least two or three and to really invest time in those you like the best so you can make them work. Don't forget it's a lot of hard work but you can do it. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching it all through. It was a long video. I hope you liked it. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, just ask and I might just answer them in my next videos. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, did I ask for a like? I think I did. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.